in a bit of trouble. John Kennedy was the first of only three coaches in 16 years. Kennedy, David Parkin and Alan Jeans each led Hawthorne to two premierships. All three remain amongst the elite of modern day tacticians. And when I was under John, I was the sort of teenager, early 20s. Um, I think I played my best football under, under David because whether that was David or the fact that I was in the kind of prime of my career, as it were. And when Jeansy came, I, was, I probably knew more about football uh, mentally, you might say, but the old body was wearing out a bit on me. My football thinking on the way the game should be played is undoubtedly been influenced more by Jeansy than the other two coaches. And I think that's partly because I, as I say, being on the match committee, I got much closer to what he, you know, to his feelings and his philosophies. And I'm sure my coaching uh, philosophies, as it were, um, are based, if you could uh, separate it, more on the five years I was under Jeansy probably than maybe the previous ten years under, under Parco and, and, and John. Tremendous. Up it goes now. Ball having a go. There's the lethal lead going for a shot at goals. He doesn't miss. Now, beautiful goal. up towards a half forward flank, a race for the ball, it's Lee Matthews in front, Cowden's after him, Lee Matthews loses position, quickly regains it. The ball taken away by Cable of North Melbourne, he's going through that bit of a run, Cable kicks it over the centre, up goes Malcolm Blight and takes the mark, plays on immediately, the side. Through the 1970s, Hawthorne won flags in 76 and 78, and Matthew's personal reputation grew with every game and every goal. this quarter, Peter. So is Martello, Lou. That shot for goal is right through the middle by Matthews. That's goal number four to Lee Matthews. And he joins Phil Baker as the leading goal scorer of the game so far. Crowd coming to life again. Scott and Nolan in the ruck. Scott winning that tap out, looking for Matthews, who picks it up on the run. Matthews fires the ball deep into a tackle. Hawthorne Knight breaks away. He's going to have a shot for goal. And then Peter Knight makes it look it up. Uh, and I'd say that it's... Uh, Hawthorne's Premiership for 1978. There it is. Hawthorne's Premiership for 1978. And there's John Scott. going to give a present to somebody in the crowd. Hawthorne have won their fourth BFL Premiership. Defeating North Melbourne. There's Richard Walter. The final scores at the MCG. Hawthorne, 18-13. 121. Defeating North Melbourne, 15-13. In 75, he topped the VFL goal kicking with 68, and he strung together three successive club best and fairest. In the make believe war, Lethal Lee was a gladiator.
That moves up ahead, but can't place the mark. He dives in, but that was acrobatic stuff. He dives in, then the left foot stacks the wall. By the mid-70s, Matthews was the most valuable and most sought-after player in the Victorian Football League. And frustrated by what he felt were Hawthorne's relatively low payments to players, he approached the club for what he felt he was worth. After a brief standoff, he stayed with the Hawks. I ended up settling and, and staying at Hawthorne for 40000 per year. For, I think it was probably 79 80 or something like that. Um, but uh, it was interesting. I think I... Uh, I was offered, uh, I think 75,000 was the highest offer that, uh, that, that was available through my solicitor. But you had to get a clearance for that. Well, I mean, that was not going to happen, I wouldn't have thought. And 60,000, I mean, it was a bit of a... Who from? Uh, I think Essendon actually was the one that had suggested that figure. Carlton, I think, had suggested uh, 60,000. I mean, I wasn't doing the direct uh, negotiation personally. Matthews was a champion, and in being fair, probably he was underpaid and he jolted us and Matthews very fairly decided that our offer was reasonable. He didn't expect to be paid as much as he was offered to go to Melbourne and uh, that would have been over our dead body anyway, but uh, at the time we, we, he, um, he probably was justified in seeking more money. Did you, as the supporters would say, love the Guernsey? Um, I, I think that loving the Guernsey is a very much overrated thing. I, I think it is respecting and, and it's respect for the people you're involved with rather than the Guernsey. I, I, I just, I mean, loving the Guernsey intimates that uh, loyalty is built up over a long period of time. And I've always believed loyalty comes from within the person rather than the cause that you're representing. In football, you know, a lot of people get false reputation, but there was no false reputation about Lee's courage. Deep out on the half forward flank, a lead and a good one in front, Matthews. Fowler arriving late, he bounds up straight away, lines up from 35 metres out, and there's number five. Lining up for goal number three this quarter, for goal number six for the match. Shouldn't make any mistake about this at all. There it is. So Hawthorne goes further ahead. Lee Matthews. There's the kick, no doubt about it at all, the umpire didn't even move, seven goals for Lee Matthews. What's Goss, Goss looking for Matthews, out on that half forward flank, Matthews is there, and a mark. Lee Matthews already kicked seven goals, he's about 50 metres out though, going for the torpedo punt. Or this round against Melbourne in 1981 was the first in which Jeans coached Beautiful. Matthews. The pocket battleship blasted a VFL goal kicking record for a rover. Brilliant goal by Matthews, goal number eight. Go, go a short pass out to Matthews, look at that. Brilliant play by Goad, over to Matthews. I hate to say it, Doug, but they don't need a full forward. No, they don't. Well, he's, he's actually playing in that position. He kicks his ninth. Now for Matthews, has already kicked uh, nine goals, and he's out in front. This could be goal number ten. What a brilliant player is Matthews. Not wasting any time either. 
lining up. He's kicked nine goals, two. Ten goals, two. Thank you very much. Eid. Looking there for Matthews. Matthews in the front position. Oh, beautiful mark by Matthews. He's got one. <laughs> Big smile. He's saying, what about a 15-metre penalty? Have a look at that. His blood streaming down his face. But he's lining up for goal number 11. I wonder what it'd be worth on the open market, though. Well, he'd be the highest paid in the business. Look at that. No doubt about it at all. It's a goal. 11 goals for Lee Matthews. Fantastic play. He'd be the best player I've seen. And he didn't whinge when he copped it. And he... he umpire's decision, things like that, he was just a fair, honest player. But once he ran over that white line, I don't think there was anybody fiercer than him in his efforts to try and win, and particularly you know, when I was there, he was captain of the side, and I suppose leading into the 80, 1983 final series, he really became a leader on that particular day. He was, he was so keen to be a uh, premiership captain, and the way he went about it, and he was a great example to the players. And when he took over captaincy of Hawthorne, he didn't have to say much, but when he put us in the huddle, he just look at us, and you know that if you let him down the football field, that you've let the whole team down. And I think I said it to our team before the 1983 grand final, as we were gathering to go onto the field, and it just occurred to me, I said, don't feel nervous, this is our, this is our thing, we're born to do this, you know. We're born to go out there and perform this game in front of all these people. That's, that's what we, all of us, do better than anything else in, the, in our lives, probably. Covered by Watson. Spinning out of the pack is Matthews. There's strength for you. And look at the champ go as he fires at the goals. He won't make the distance. Judge into full forward. Matthews is there! Matthews, 30 metres out. And the goal. Bertie's got it. They're making a lot of fundamental mistakes, uh, the Bombers, at the moment, Bob. And it's with Hawthorne not able to capitalise on it so far. But they might this time as Matthews takes the mark. Matthews some um, 35 to 40 metres out from goal. What's he done with that one? Judging by the crowd, it's a goal. On the Mew. Streaming downfield, looking for Matthews. Oh! oh! What a grab from the skipper. And he's getting old, he's about 33 years of age. I don't know how he got up that high. He had a help from the, from the <laughs> shoulder of Gary. That That's uh, the grand final mark so far, isn't it? I'll guarantee when he got up that high, he was saying to himself, how the heck am I going to get down now? He's kicked three. He's missed that one, has he? Or is it three? It's a goal. Good kick from Wallace, looking for Matthews. Heard, oh, beautiful one-hander, just not uh, completing it enough. Matthews, a shot at goal. Oh. Matthews. They're just falling apart, Aston. They look just as feel as though they're not out there, don't they? It looks that way at the moment. This, this is a perfect example. Kink was 30 metres away and made no attempt to get to the centre of the play. Matthews got one. never guess who it is. He's gone again. Oh, golly, I don't know about this one. Oh, what do you reckon, Bob, about that? I don't think Lee's too concerned. Uh, the one that uh, down Terry Wallace, uh, which was not a report of an incident earlier, looked far more severe than that. Now, uh, Roger Merritt discussed with the uh, report, but still it's going in the book and you can't do much about that. So that's four reports. And there's no doubt about Matthews going for goal number six. And that's 15 why he's metres as well, don't forget. 15 metres. This really makes him the champion that he is. Uh, when the bigger occasions uh, come along, Pete, he just lifts himself right to the top, doesn't he? Five goals to Matthews and a chance to make it number six. Six goals to Matthews. So at the 30 minute mark, we see the score. There's the silent Hawthorne Premiers from 1883. And a fine effort. There's their coach, Alan Jeans. And what a happy man. It couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. One of the most popular coaches with the media and with everybody concerned with football. The players are just delighted, Peter. And I know that Peter Landy, deep down in his own heart, that's our co-commentator here, our host of the show here, has a little feeling towards Hawthorne, and there's must be a lump in your throat too, Pete. Got some very generous odds from Essendon supporters during the week too. It's 6-4, to four, Lou, it's beautiful. Now there's Alan Jeans receiving the handshakes and the congratulations from the player, people concerned. Bob, it's a great feeling. And of course, Hawthorne are premiers for 1983.
funny, you know, I hate to be cocky, but written by that much sometimes spoils it, you know, I, because, you know, you know it's coming and they're, you know, they're sort of getting used to it the whole quarter, but our fellas today, they put their heart and soul into the game and just ran the fellas off their feet and, you know, I was just proud to lead them. The medallion and the Premiership Cup for 1983 to the captain of the Hawthorne Football Club, Lee. Why have they been successful? People, just people. The people involved that, that uh, probably uh, instigated a culture uh, in the 50s, I would say, the John Kennedys, the Ron Cooks, the Phil Ryans, who were honest men. They were honest men. They, 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 uh, I think they were competent and they were honest and they had principles. And I think those three things are, are all go hand in hand. If you're not competent, well, you're going to fail. But if you haven't got principles, I think you're going to fail also because eventually you get found out. You just can't lie your way through. And I think they created something of a culture at Hawthorne. At 32, Lee Matthews still gets best on ground performances. Three years ago, Barassi ranked the league's toughest rover in the half million dollar category. Now in the twilight of his career, he's still a priceless commodity in the football marketplace. At Hawthorne today, the memories came flooding back on the eve of his 300th game. <laughs> it was, it's funny, in the mail this morning I got a, a, the back page of The Sun, a lady had sent in to me that must have come across it, that was a picture of me before my first game against North Melbourne, here at Glen Ferry Oval, back in 1969, and uh, you know, it sort of, that did bring back the memories, it was just coincidence I think that, that she happened to send it in on that time. <laughs> Robertson to Moore on the parking wall. And good play on the part of the Hawthorne defence. Matthews again as he drives the fourth out of the half fourth on a good mark and a good pass there to Brewer. Hanson grabs the ball, but he's grabbed that time by Di Pieta Menico. Now it's Matthews spinning out of the black, playing his 300th game over to In the 17 Menico. years that he played, the game changed. Its style, its speed, even the rules. But Matthews changed with the game, even improved with it. And he thrived on the fierce rivalries. The fiercest of all in the mid-80s was Hawthorne's frequent finals against Essendon. But the man Lethal respected most was another football strongman. Ronnie Andrews always sticks in my mind because Ronnie was always in my part of the ground. I mean, I was up in the forward line and Ronnie was playing centre half back and uh, Ronnie was a you know pretty wild man no doubt about that on the field and uh, you always knew that if you had your head over the ball that Ronnie's likely to be in the vicinity there somewhere so uh, so I don't know if it affected the way I played as it were but I always knew that when Ronnie was around you were, you were in danger. He was the most fearsome? I think so yes yeah I think I'd have to say that I, I don't think anyone else really sticks in my mind as so much uh, as Ronnie. He's just, he was a big, powerful man, and as I say, always in my, often in my part of the ground. The big fella Lee Matthews, can he mark it? Oh, it's a free kick for sure. Against Andrews, I would say. No, he's still not the best in the world because he can't stand up too good. And Ronnie Andrews uh, clapping his hands, and he's got a grin from ear to ear. Did you ever feel fear? Towards the end, I think I did, yeah. As I say, when I was young, I didn't feel fear. It just never crossed my mind. As I got older, I knew that, uh, you know, those, I don't know, those situations when you had to back back into a pack or the, the more dangerous parts. I wasn't as gung-ho in, uh, in my later years, I'm sure, as I was when I was, uh, when I was young. Screws it over the shoulder, covers a fair amount of distance and a nice mark by Matthews. He never takes his eye off the ball. Matthews is clear of uh, Thompson. He'll have a shot at goal. He could get this one. He has. And the old champ is really fighting back. 